Yes. If I have an orchid that's in bloom, but it doesn't have any roots, <laughs> would you suggest me cutting off the flower spike? Um, it's a fail, right? It's a phalaenopsis. Yeah, yeah that's I particularly. Do. Okay, that, that's a good question. Um, um, I don't talk about fail, so I can't tell you. No, I can't tell you. Okay, that's, that's that other kind of orchid. <laughs> this is how does the plant look does it look healthy is it growing pretty well and normally they'll go oh yeah the plant grows great it's got lots of new growth new leaves or it's got new you know uh, new growth on the plant it looks great I just never bloom it so, so what's going on so the next question I always ask is so are you fertilizing it and almost always they will say oh yeah i'm really good about fertilizing it i i fertilize it almost every watering and i i'm good about doing that year round doesn't matter i, I fertilize almost every watering i don't go real heavy with the fertilizer but i do it year round same the same amount and so my response to that and they normally are beaming with pride because they're so i'm not supposed to use an orchid fertilizer Yes, you're supposed to use an orchid fertilizer, but you're not supposed to use an orchid fertilizer year-round. <clears throat> Here's the problem, and this is the number one. I said I'd tell you four things that you could do to bloom almost any orchid that, that you're having trouble with. And all orchid fertilizers, the first number, there's three numbers, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The first number will always be the highest number or as high as any of the others. It'll either be 20, 20, 20, or it'll be 20, 10, 20, or 20, 10, 10. But that first number in all the work at fertilizers will be as high or higher than the other two numbers. That first number, the nitrogen, is the one thing the plants, all orchid plants want to grow foliage, okay? If you use a half teaspoon in spring, summer, then go a, uh, a quarter yeah, four, teaspoon, yeah. all right? If you use a quarter teaspoon, that's so weak, I'd just not fertilize it for a couple of months. A quarter teaspoon's not really very heavy. I use about a half teaspoon per gallon of the Michigan State in, in, in uh, my watering. Yeah. All right, so water it less often by one or two days a week. If you're one of these weekend waterers and every Saturday or Sunday you water all your orchids, then back off by one or two days. The reason for that is when the plant's cooler and it's not getting fertilized and it's slowing its growth down, it's not going to need or use as much water. And so back off on how often you water by a day or two. So now you're starting to start at a little bit of water. It's kind of wishing it got watered like it used to in the spring, summer, but you've backed off. That's number three. Back off on the temperature. And what you want is not a lower temperature. What you want the plant to get is a swing in temperature of about 10 to 15 degrees. Okay? Day and night? Like you do from day to night. Okay. Nighttime, as you go by, by say, October, um, although I forget, we're in Alabama, so by mid-January, um, <laughs> you, you all start to get lower temperatures at night. Um, but when you start getting temperatures into the low to mid or low to mid 60s, that's the kind of swing I'm talking about, or even down into the low to mid 50s. When you get, I, I assume here. When you get down to say 55 at night, in the daytime it still may get up to 70, you know, or or higher. That's a 15 or more swing in temperature. If it gets down to 60 at night, it may still get up to 75 or even 80 in the daytime. Again, that's a huge 15, 20 degree swing. What you want the plant to do is to have about a month, if at all possible, of swings in temperature from night to day to night to day. Now, if you grow in a home, that is the most likely scenario for not reblooming an orchid. Mm. If, because the plant kind of gets lazy. It's got warmth, it's mm -hmm. got fertilizer, it's, it's got sun in the window, and it grows. 
but it doesn't bloom. No. So what moving it outside or into a room, if you've got an older house, a lot of older houses, you'll have a room that if you shut the door, crack the window, that room will get Stay a cool lot cooler room. at night yeah. by, by <laughs> October, November, let's say. And so you can put it in a room and do, do that. Down here, you're far enough south, you may get by with putting it in the garage. And you can actually mm, put it in the garage where it will get no sun for about a month, but it'll go through swings in temperature, and it'll be fine for that month's time that you're doing it. Um, it, is, it stresses it a little when you're doing that to get no sun. You're better off moving it out in the backyard on a table or a bench where bugs won't get on it. But put it under a shade tree where it is under the canopy of, of the leaves for that month you've got it outside. When you do that, the sun hits it coming up in the morning for an hour or two, the sun hits it. Then it gets high enough, the canopy of the tree blocks the sun yeah. completely. And then late in the day when it's going down on the other it side, it may come sun. in and hit it for an hour, hour and a half from the other direction. But that sun's so early or late in the day, it won't burn it. And so somehow you want to try to put the plant in an area where you'll get a swing in temperature for about a month. If you have a couple days where a quick Arctic front moves in from up the north and it drops into the upper 30s. 40s, low 50s, you can bring it in for a day or two, but then you may hear for the next 10 days it's going to be back fairly warm again. Cooler nights, warmer days, move it back out. You just want to try to get it over a period of about a month or a month and a half, however long you can get that swing from mid-September on before it starts getting too cold. Um, try to do that. When you hear you're getting regular nighttime temperatures in the mid 50s or below, bring it in and you're done, okay? Um, you don't want it to go below about 60 degrees for three nights, four nights. You don't want it to do, do that for a long period. Number three. Number four is easy. Mother Nature does it for you unless you're growing under lights. So if you're not growing under lights, for, for get about number four. Number four is back off on the amount of light the plant gets. If it's growing in a windowsill or in a greenhouse, as you go into fall, winter, the sun's at a lower angle, it's less intense, the days get shorter, the um, hours in the day get shorter, it's not going to get light as often and as strong, and so Mother Nature does it for you. I only mention back off on the amount of light for those people that grow under lights exclusively. Mm -hmm. If you are growing under, you know, grow Windows lights, D. then Starting in September, back off by one hour. I recommend 15 hours, 14 to 15 hours a day, spring and summer. But as you go into fall in September, back it to 14. Then October 13. Then November 12. December 11. January, you're down to 10 hours a day. <laughs> February, you add on and start adding back on. So by, by May, you're back up to 15 hours. Okay. That is... All, that is because the, the light's not on as long telling the plant we're going into a slowdown period. So, what does all this do to get the plant to bloom? Orchids, and this is going to really bother a lot of you, but orchids don't bloom for our pleasure. We all would love to think they do. They're making us happy. They don't. Orchids bloom as a survival mechanism. That's the only reason they bloom. They want to put up a flower, reproduce, and then they've done their thing for, for you know, the survival of that particular plant. When you starve it of, of nitrogen, when you starve it of water, when you starve it of, of sunlight, and when you have to freeze the plant to death, which you're not really doing, but when you're chilling it down, all those are stress factors on the plant okay. that force it to stop its rapid growth and, and, and go into its sort of winter slowdown mode. And it is that that causes the plant, while under the stress of all those things, to say, I need to put up a bloom spike and reproduce before I die. Mm. And that's, that's how it all works. So, if you do two of those four things, you modify the fertilizer and you chill it down, you will bloom the vast majority of the orchids that you've had a problem with. 
If you do all three, you'll almost certainly do it. And remember, Mother Nature does one of them unless you're growing under light. So that's really doing all four. If you do all four of these things, you will bloom almost any orchid that you've got. For those few orchids that you may have that even if you do these, you have a problem blooming them, I recommend taking a little time, think about an enemy that you have and give it to them. Thank <laughs> you.